All right, PPLers, welcome to week 13, the final week of the regular season of the PPL. We're here at PPL Live. Um, we're going to jump right on into uh, the first two matchups, the, the two matchups that have no bearing on the final four. Uh, the first matchup we're going to start with is Squad Underestimated versus Only for the Boss. Um, this matchup here, looking over it, I mean, it's really just to close out the season. Uh, squad uh, looks like they went with Jimmy Garoppolo uh, to as a free agent. Uh, but he still got Derek Hart in the lineup. I would start Garoppolo. I would start Josh Gordon. I would start, you know, a lot of these uh, these guys um, that are kind of uh, question marks and see what he gets out of them. Um, because, I mean, what does he have to really lose? On the boss's side, um, you know, Russell Wilson should probably have a, a big game in, in um, the Sunday night game. And then, of course, McKinnon, Diggs, Hill, and Kelsey are the Viking um, chief combo. That he'll throw out there along with of course uh his uh you know chiefs um that being said looking at this matchup it's it's pretty um it should probably be a pretty competitive one the jets uh may give kansas city a game uh that being said i really like squad underestimated especially if they kind of go um unconventional here and um go with all of these crazy starts so i got squad underestimated winning this matchup um 109 to 97. Moving on to our next uh, non-playoff uh, figuring matchup, we've got the United Players, the Destroyers versus Patty's Twins. Uh, this is just a matchup to close out things. Um, it really, I mean, like I said, it has no bearing. The Twins um, probably, I mean, I guess they could do themselves uh, harm by winning this matchup because that would uh, throw the first pick in the draft into tiebreaker status. Um, that being said, looking around at it, um, I actually like the United players lineup this week. I think Ted Ginn will have a good game against his old team, Carolina, and Brady and Burkhead uh, are a good combination. Uh, Jimmy Graham has been an awesome tight end. He's a big-time red zone threat. And, of course, looking over at um, uh, Williams, Terrence Williams, that's a, that's, a, that's a dart throw tonight on Thursday night. Um, on the twin side, Deion Lewis is a great play. Cooper Cup's been awesome, and Antonio Brown's a good player. Uh, Greg Olson is uh, always uh, – well, he was a big disappointment because he left that game early. Jamal Williams hurt the Twins big time because he went off for 30 points in a matchup that uh, she could have, uh, you know, upset a piece of the guys last week. Um, that being said, looking at this matchup, uh, I've got the United players, the Destroyers, winning this matchup 110 to 106. All righty, and now we're going to get into – the bubble, the playoff bubble, it's going to burst for someone uh, this week. We've got three uh, candidates. Uh, the Argonauts and Appease the Gods have both clinched uh, a playoff spot. Um, the Argonauts already uh, six time now uh, Alpha Conference champions and uh, have went back to back in the Alpha Conference. Uh, looking over in Omega, Appease the Gods uh, with a win over the Comeback Kids will clinch uh, the Omega Conference title. They're in, in no danger of missing the playoffs. So those two teams we'll put on the backboard burner for now. Let's talk about the teams that are um, in the hunt. Uh, the first team um, is the Comeback Kids. Uh, all they need to do is win. They can. They, they have the biggest um, uh, margin of, uh, you know, of outcome. They could either go in as the number two seed as the Omega Conference champions or drop out of the playoffs altogether if they lose and the gaff wins and the mean machine wins so uh the comeback kids scenario is winning in or they would definitely need an argonaut win over the mean machine or a gaff attack loss to the baby gas team um, in order to clinch their playoff spot so uh looks like the kids are cheering for the argonauts and the baby gas team um for uh the mean machine or excuse me the gaff attack because he he's already in all he has to do is win and, and he's in uh that that's pretty much it of course uh a mean machine loss automatically clinches a playoff spot for the gaff and uh a comeback kids loss uh and a gaff victory would obviously clinch a playoff berth um for the gaff uh the gaff pretty much uh, has to win and in and uh that's about it but uh he could get help even if he lost if the argonauts beat the mean machine the Mean Machine is going to need the most help of everyone. Even if he were to beat the Argonauts, uh, the Mean Machine may not make the playoffs because if, uh, if the Comeback Kids win against the Peace of the Gods, the Peace of the Gods is already in. The Comeback Kids are already in. And then it would be a tiebreaker between the Gaff and um, the Machine. 
and the uh, gaff would get that tiebreaker based on points scored. So the Mean Machine needs that. Um, and the Mean Machine could also use an Appease the Gods victory um, over the Comeback Kids. So it's pretty funny that uh, the Mean Machine is depending on ATG uh, to win this week uh, to possibly get into the playoffs or the Baby Gas team, an Alpha Conference rival, to do them a solid. 